Ever so often, I find myself hyper fixated on a piece of media that really resonated with me. Last year, it was the Total Drama reboots. The year before, it was the Query. I'm not even going to get into all the web comics that had this effect on me, because we'd be here all day. There was a point in time, however, in the year of our Lord 2020, where I had this strong, unhealthy obsession with gay Asian dramas, otherwise known as Boys Love, or BL for short. This genre of work really latched onto me. I remember standouts like Game Boys, Hello Stranger, Three Will Be Free. Okay, maybe that last one isn't 100% BL, but I had to mention it because it's so underrated. Anyways, suffice to say, I was hooked. But how? How did I even get here in the first place? Well, there just so happened to be a gateway drug. A certain Chinese BL series that left me utterly addicted by the end. And that very same series just so happens to be called... Oh. That... That makes a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> oh my gosh, finally getting around to talking about this show, I... Let's just get into it. Addicted, also known as Heroin, is a 2016 BL series based on the novel Are You Addicted? by Chai Jidan. Also, just an FYI, pretty sure my pronunciation for these names will be off, so apologizing in advance if I say them wrong. Oh, and this video will contain spoilers. I'm not trying to spoil the full story or anything, but regardless, do consider yourself warned. Of course, I'll have the link to the series below. It's all on YouTube for free, so if you want to check that out first, don't let me stop you. Getting into the story itself, Addicted follows two primary characters, Ilo Yin, who I'll call Yin Zi for brevity, and Gu Hai. Yin Zi comes from a poor background. He lives with his kind but ditzy dad, Bai Han Chi, and his grandma. His mom, Jiang Yuan, has been out of the picture for about 10 years, divorcing his dad and, at the start of the story, marrying some rich guy. Yin Zi makes do with the life he has. He loves his dad and granny, but is pretty resentful towards his mom for abandoning the family, refusing to want anything to do with her when she tries to reconnect with him. Gu Hai, on the opposite side of things, comes from a family of wealth. His dad, Gu Wei Ting, is a stern man with a high-ranking position in the military, and also happens to be remarrying. Gu Hai has his own issues with his dad. His mom died a while back, and he feels like his dad was responsible for the incident, despite her death being labeled as an accident. It's the thought of his stepmother's son moving in, however, that pushes Gu Hai over the edge, refusing to live with his dad any longer and moving out. He even wants to transfer schools, moving away from the private school he was attending in favor of a more modest public school that's closer to his new place. And it just so happens to be the very same school that Yin Zi attends. And to say that these two start out on less than friendly terms would be an understatement. After Yin Zi bluntly tells Gu Hai to write like a human after not being able to read his name earlier, along with another terse interaction following that, Gu Hai responds by ripping out a page from Yin Zi's workbook, the page in question containing his homework. That causes him to get in trouble with the teacher and, honey, that's just the beginning. To recount, we see Gu Hai change seats so he gets to be behind Yin Zi, 
and one of the first things he does is cut holes in Yinzi's jacket while he sleeps. He also one day puts sleeping pills in Yinzi's water bottle, which causes him to be escorted to the school infirmary since he also took expired blue medication earlier that day. Yinzi contributes his fair share, however, stitching Gu Hai's jacket shut while he's preoccupied at PE and pulling this pretty elaborate prank where he locks the classroom doors while Gu Hai is out and uses some mechanical oil he bought to prevent Gu Hai from entering through the windows. So yeah, these two kind of start out as enemies more than anything. Except, that's not entirely accurate, as I haven't given you the full picture yet. Yes, Gu Hai does love to annoy the shit out of Yenzi, but he also has this genuine fascination with him as well. Again, to recount, Gu Hai uses the homework he stole from Yenzi to practice his own writing. He also secretly follows Yenzi home and, upon learning that his only clean pair of underwear was mistakenly washed by his dad again, leaves a new one at his desk. He does this again when Yinzi appears visibly sick from wearing the wet underwear, along with some anti-diarrhea medication to boot. Even after cutting holes in Yinzi's jacket, he planned to stitch them back while he slept in class, but wasn't able to on time, which kind of pissed Gu Hai off. And there was also that time he stalked Yinzi again and saw him help out a family friend after her small boot shop got rained on, prompting Gu Hai to buy him breakfast the following day. Not to mention the numerous times he longingly stares at Yinzi, something that even Yinzi's childhood friend Yang Mang picks up on. So yeah, in case I haven't made it any more clear, Gu Hai is very much infatuated with Yin Zi, and also protective of him too, beating up this random guy at school after said guy proclaimed to the entire class that Yin Zi was abandoned by his mom, with said mom now being a prostitute. What? Where did this even come from? His mom isn't even a prostitute. Anyways, like I said before, Gu Hai beats the shit out of him, and I think it's at this moment where we start to see Yin Zi soften to Gu Hai as a person. Gu Hai still annoys him, don't get me wrong, but we see them spending more time together and gradually becoming closer. And while neither of them knows this at first, we, as the viewers, know from the jump that they're actually stepbrothers. Yeah, Gu Hai's dad is with Yin Zi's mom. Oh, the drama. The drama of it all. Also, since I neglected to do it earlier, I'll pivot for a bit and chat more about Yang Mang and Yo Chi. They're basically the more prominent classmates we see interact with the two leads. Yang Mang, again, is Yin Zi's childhood friend, a generally cheerful dude that sometimes gets called a girl. I guess he has more conventionally feminine facial features, but yeah, there's him and Yo Chi, who on the one hand has his own fan club of girls who think he's hot, but on the other hand, he's kind of a dork. His character in particular honestly sends me. Like, he's so funny, and every time he gives us a bewildered expression, I just have to laugh. So, I believe these two are supposed to be the story's secondary couple, but really they don't have that much focus. I hear this is expanded upon in the original novels, and a spin-off they star in, but for this live-action series as is, they're just friends. But yeah, that's my little attempt at mapping out the premise of this show. 
now I get to gush about how much brain rot it gave me. Because for a good period of time, it wouldn't leave my head. Like the show's namesake, I was very much addicted. And really, it's not that hard to explain why. The chemistry that Yinzi and Guhai have with one another is so good, like through the roof. Their interactions together, even when arguing and fighting, just never fails to suck me in. Like, there's no choice. I have to be invested. I just have to. Which is especially impressive when you consider that Timmy Shu and Johnny Huang, the actors that play Yin Zi and Gu Hai respectively, haven't acted before this. This was literally their acting debut, which is honestly mind blowing to me. They absolutely crushed it, for sure. There's also a lot of other things about the show I could comment on that I find great. The supporting cast, the cinematography, the music, the more grounded and realistic setting, all of which was accomplished on a pretty low budget of allegedly 5 million yuan, or around 741,300 US dollars. I wasn't really able to find much verification on this beyond what I saw on Wikipedia, so take it with a grain of salt. Anyways, I could comment more on all of these things, but at the end of the day, it's the sheer charisma and chemistry of the two leads that really takes the show to the next level. In my opinion, at least. Having said that, I do want to address a certain elephant in the room here. And for this particular section, I'm going to give a content warning. I will be discussing and presenting scenes of non-consent from the show. I don't believe it's anything too graphic or something that would get the video removed from YouTube, but I still want to be very clear and intentional with this warning. If you don't want to hear about any of this, then you can skip to the time shown on screen. If you're interested in hearing about what I have to say, but don't want to see the visuals, then I recommend just opening up a new tab or looking away till I give the green light that we're finished with the topic. All good? Okay, let's jump in. If you watched a show, then you would know that Gu Hai often gets a bit handsy with Yin Zi. We often see this while the two are sharing a bed. For context, this is around the time Gu Hai is staying over at Yin Zi's place and sleeping in the same bed. Sometimes it's Gu Hai trying to get Yin Zi to sleep a certain way. Sometimes it's smacking his butt when he's ignoring Gu Hai. Sometimes it's touching his junk and offering to jack Yin Zi off. And sometimes it's generally him invading his personal space and getting much closer than what Yin Zi is comfortable with. The most severe moment from the series, however, and spoilers by the way for later events, is when Yin Zi gets kidnapped and brought to Gu Hai, with the latter orchestrating said kidnapping. So, for context, in the previous episode, the boys found out that they were stepbrothers, which really made Yin Zi feel some type of way. He doesn't want to associate with Gu Hai anymore because of the family drama, and this eventually prompts Gu Hai to order a kidnapping on Yin Zi. So, in this scene, he's handcuffed, legs are tied, and Gu Hai forcibly kisses him. Okay, um... You're probably staring at the screen, wondering how the fuck I sang this show's praises earlier, only to pivot to Gu Hai being a sexual harasser to Yin Zi. Allow me to explain. This show is not meant to be a wholesome or pure experience. The title is very much a giveaway here. It deals with addiction, specifically Gu Hai's addiction and obsession with Yin Zi. 
even when you blend their names together, it gives you Hilo Yin, which sounds a lot like the drug heroin. And now you know why the series is also called that. Anyways, in this sense, the pair is fundamentally toxic, and the series doesn't shy away from showing this. Hell, I hear the novels are even more intense in that regard. So yes, the show is not for everyone, and I very much recommend you stay away from it, if you find these themes distressing. However, if you're someone that's able to soldier through these themes, or, better yet, someone that enjoys dark, problematic, and transgressive themes in BL, then you will gobble this shit up, trust and believe. Personally, I love my fair share of wholesome content, and usually stay in that lane. But occasionally there will be a work of fiction with problematic themes that really manages to capture my attention. And Addicted just so happens to be one of them. Even with the glaring toxicity present in the relationship, I still can't help but root for them. Again, the chemistry and charisma between these two is simply unmatched. And let me be clear, we are exclusively talking about fiction here. At the end of the day, Addicted is a work of fiction, and my enjoyment and love for the series does not inform my real-life values, morals, and beliefs. I do not condone Gu Hai's actions in real life, nor should anyone, for that matter. There's such a thing as separating fiction from reality, believe it or not. So yeah, that's my overall statement on the matter. I hope I was able to explain things well enough. Alright, here's your green light. It's safe to come back now, I promise. So, to say that this BL made waves upon its airing wouldn't be doing it justice. Because quite frankly, it was a full-blown tsunami. The first episode alone scored 10 million views across the different Chinese sites it premiered on. All within 24 hours. The show went viral on Weibo, a Chinese social media site, and just like that, it basically launched the main actors into stardom. Fans were invested in this show, and the actors were more than happy to play into the hype, doing all these media appearances, photo shoots, the whole shebang. It really did look like the show had a bright future ahead. All the buzz and popularity for sure secured the second season. And then the CCP stepped in. Specifically, it was China's state administration of press, publication, radio, film, and television that ordered these online companies to suspend the show, seemingly without any reason. But let's not kid ourselves here. We all know the reason. The Chinese government just isn't accepting of LGBT content. That's just a reality. And so, all the episodes were taken down from the Chinese sites that streamed them, with the last three episodes not even released yet. Those last three episodes, along with the rest of the season, can be found on YouTube, but that doesn't change the fact that Addicted got cancelled. Its anticipated second season got shelved, and the CCP even went as far as unofficially banning the lead actors, Timmy and Johnny, from appearing together at any public events. Even outside of China they weren't safe, with security guards pulling them apart during a fan meetup in Thailand. And it was on that day, April 17, 2016, where the two had their last appearance together. God, what a fucking travesty. I really wanted to see the show continue, and the fact that we're never gonna get that honestly breaks my heart. It really does. 
I loved watching Addicted, and loved seeing Yinzi and Guhai's relationship develop. Even during the uncomfortable and problematic parts, I just couldn't stop watching. I'm sad that the show got cancelled, sad that this raw, gripping story about love and addiction won't have the future seasons it so clearly deserves. And I'm sad for Yang Mang and Yo Chi too. I really wanted to see them grow as characters and develop into their own relationship. Their dynamic was different from Yinzi and Gu Hai, and it would have been fun to experience that more. Having said all that, the original novels by Chai Zhidan, along with a 24 chapter short story focusing on Yang Mang and Yo Chi, are complete and translated. I've added the links to the description below, they're on Wattpad. So at the end of the day, it's really on me to read the novels and get the proper conclusion I'm craving from this series. And make no mistake, I will definitely read them. I just haven't gotten to them yet because, honestly, I've been pretty lazy. As for the actors, it looks like they've generally been enjoying a great success since filming Addicted. There was, however, a point in time where Timmy wasn't able to land new work after the whole debacle with Addicted's cancellation, which very much affected him. Eventually, though, he was able to make a comeback in 2018 and has been booked and blessed ever since. Johnny, likewise, has also been booked and busy. And both also do music. Even back during Addicted's run, Timmy and Johnny both sang the opening theme, while Timmy sang the ending theme. Both beautiful songs, by the way. Definitely give them a listen. Before I close this video out, I want to leave you with one more thing. The Eight Year Promise. This is a phrase coined by fans of Addicted. I don't want to go too deep into the significance of that phrase since it involves spoilers from the novels, but suffice to say, it's basically the hope that, in eight years time, Timmy and Johnny will be able to publicly reunite again ending their unofficial ban. The last time we saw Timmy and Johnny together was at that very same Thai meetup, back in April 17, 2016. As of this video's recording, it's April 16, 2024, and the video definitely won't be posted till after the 17th. So, to my knowledge, it looks like the eight-year promise won't happen after all. It was always more so wishful thinking than anything else, but nevertheless, I found it really sweet when fans occasionally brought it up. While we may not get that reunion anytime soon, I'm hopeful that, at some point, China's views on LGBT content will change and the media depicting said content will be celebrated rather than banned. And maybe, just maybe, we'll then see Timmy and Johnny, the lead actors that brought us one of the most addicting BL dramas of our time, fulfill that promise.